Hey Falcon Force, welcome back to the Nest. Today I'll be showing you the top 5 platformers on Xbox Game Pass. First up is Ghost Song in 5th place. Ghost Song is a 2022 video game developed by Old Moon and published by Humble Games. In this platformer, the player is asked to inhabit a dead suit, the mysterious humanoid of unknown origin, who abruptly wakes up from a long slumber on a desolated moon of Lauren. Now I have to apologize for this first game, I think there are some better choices than this one, like The Last Case of Benedict Fox or Neon Abyss, but I ended up choosing this game because of how much it looked like Salt and Sanctuary, which is basically a 2D Dark Souls game. I, I really love it, I enjoy it. This game starts you out knowing absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, the more I played it, the more I was confused. They never really explain anything, which made me sad, considering how the game starts you off with dialogue. It tells you to get to a certain location on your map, but I wasn't even able to get there due to dying multiple times. Maybe you don't care about me dying a bunch, so let me tell you about gameplay. I felt like I was playing Metroid as I got to adventure through this 2D world full of enemies and dark surroundings. The reason why I said Metroid is because the enemies look disgusting. Like, what the heck is that? Ew! It was fun to blast them up with my energy gun, though. It had the fun concept of melee attacks and that if your gun gets overheated, your melee does more damage. I'm gonna keep this brief. While this game was fun and entertaining, I had to play it a lot longer than I was willing to in order to get into the story. However, it was pretty fun and addicting. If we didn't have other games to get to, I might have played it longer. Based on what I experienced, my rating of this game is 5 out of 10. In fourth place, we have Hollow Knight. For those of you who might know what Hollow Knight is, I know you're probably getting angry at me for putting it in fourth, but calm down, okay? I have my reasons. Hollow Knight is a challenging 2D action adventure developed and published by Team Cherry. You'll explore twisting caverns, battle tainted creatures, and escape intricate traps, all to solve an ancient, long hidden mystery. The game starts off strong, as this was the only game that I played that gave me a cutscene at the beginning. I felt like I was watching a really good fan animation. It didn't take me long to get into gameplay, quite literally jumping right into it as I fell down a cliff and then entered a well, falling even further. The platforming wasn't too hard at the beginning, but it got increasingly harder as I dove deeper into the Lost Kingdom that the town dwellers called Hollow Nest. I was able to jump across platforms, dodge dangers, and balance my way across spikes in this amazing platformer. I could also fight enemies, like this one, and, and this one, or maybe this one, and, and this one. Are you getting the picture? They're all bugs. That's super yucky and I hate bugs. Ugh. Every enemy that I beat filled me with pride and determination to fight more. There were really cool aspects to this game that made it feel unique. Healing using soul energy from enemies, fighting bosses that had very fun and unique movesets and patterns. For Pete's sake, you save by sitting on a bench. The game also looked visually appealing the more I ventured. There wasn't a lack of things to look at. Every room I walked in either had some difficult footwork, candy for my eyes, or enemies to fight. I loved every second. I got to meet funny characters with funny voice Thank acting too, laughable dialogue, and great personality as I learned they were more like me in this lost kingdom who wanted to find out more about the forgotten history. Hollow Knight is an amazing game, and I'd love to play more sometime. My rating for this game is 7 out of 10. Rising from the dead, it's Dead Cells taking third place. Dead Cells is an action-adventure platformer developed and published by Motion Twin, where you explore an island and finish the game in one run without dying. Each run is different as the island changes each time you die. The game's platforming is alright, I mean, you get some pretty cool abilities that allow you to scale through the rewiring dungeons that create awesome gameplay. I mean, I could climb chains, I could jump over spikes, and even fly through the air. I mean, that was pretty awesome! The game has platforming aspects, but you could tell the creators put a lot more work into the fighting of the game. The game was fast-paced in everything you did, but the fighting had to be one of my favorite parts. I mean, just look at this. With all the abilities that there were to unlock and find inside of this game, I found myself fighting every enemy that I came across. Come here, buddy. Come here. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just... I'm just... just Psych! Die! Die! I could throw bombs, shoot lightning, and of course, do your average hacking and slashing, which was really fun and satisfying. The more I played, the longer I wanted to play. Not only was the fighting fun, but the game looked pleasing with its 2D and 3D style. Dead Cells looked very much alive, both through the enemies and through the world building. As I explored, I found myself looking at the wonderful beauty of this game. But I won't talk about that since we have even more beautiful games coming up. While there wasn't a huge story, there didn't need to be. There was so much packed into this small game, it carried itself with its dungeon exploration, cool mega chunky bosses, and unique concepts. For example, the faster you complete a level, you can unlock new doors. Sadly, I'm not that good at video games, so I can't show you anything that happens behind those doors. Y yeah, sorry about that. All the more reason to try it out for yourself. My rating for this game is 9 out of 10. Brr, is it getting cold? Climbing its way up is Celeste in second place. 
Celeste is a 2018 platform game developed and published by an indie studio named Maddie Makes Games. The player controls Madeline, a young woman with anxiety and depression who aims to climb Celeste Mountain. The game was fun. You'd be surprised that a game with no fighting can take second place, but here it is. I enjoyed how the game only took 20 seconds to put me into gameplay. I'm not exaggerating when I say that is the quickest intro I've ever had into a game. The game immerses you from the start with its chill tunes and a roar-like atmosphere as you climb the mountain and learn more about our protagonist and Celeste. I found it crazy that the game could have so much great gameplay and amazing story to match. In addition, the dialogue was funny to watch, with their facial expressions, the animation of their pixels, and giving voices to the characters. I loved it. Celeste had my attention the longest. With each room that I conquered, I wanted to clear another and another and another. And with the difficult parkour and maneuvering you had to do, it made for amazing quick-paced gameplay. There were puzzles I had to figure out, challenges I was given a choice to complete with collectible floating strawberries to award me. Don't ask why there were floating strawberries, because I have no idea, but I loved it nonetheless. The game took a good amount of skill, but once I got used to the controls, it was mainly a problem solving game as I tried to figure out how to pass each room in my head before executing my movements. With all of the moving blocks, spikes, and extra dashes, it made for fun gameplay that I could continue to binge. The game even lets you save in the middle of a level to come back at any time. That definitely made me enjoy the game even more, knowing that when I had to hop off, the next time I got on, I would start exactly where I left off. I was excited and entertained the whole time I was playing, and I would have sat there for hours if I could have. My rating for this game is 9.2 out of 10. Taking first place, it's Ori and the Blind Forest. Ori and the Blind Forest is an action-adventure platformer developed by Moon Studios that combines deep, explanatory gameplay with emotional storytelling. Join Ori to solve the mysteries of a dying forest while escaping the evil clutches of Kuro, the Dark Owl. Sorry for anyone who wanted to see the owl, but I never saw him once while I was playing, so I got no clips for you on that. The game instantly stole my heart as its enthralling story captured my attention. You're placed in the setting with a motherly figure named Nero, but as the forest starts to fade and food runs scarce, Nero passes away, leaving Ori to fend for himself in these harsh, dying woods. The game immediately makes you feel for Ori with its backstory, which made me enjoy the game even more as I played it. Most games that I've played make the character's backstory progressive, so you don't learn their backstory until way later. As for gameplay, this game really does take the cake. There's fighting, fast-paced gameplay, and more importantly, there's difficult platforming aspects that had its hook in me. Believe it or not, I actually failed a couple of jumps. The game has amazing features, like climbing. Okay, listen, you're just gonna have to trust me. I didn't get enough footage in order to show you everything, but I mean, just look at this skill tree and ability wheel. Pretty cool, huh? Come on, believe me. I enjoyed fighting enemies, making hard jumps, and fighting bosses in this beautiful game. Its serene beauty has to be one of my favorite things about it. The creators put so much love into the graphics, and it's clearly seen the more you play the game. In just the short time I played the game, I found myself more than once indulging in the great sights around me. The blowing of the trees, the ripples of the water, the beasts crawling in the background and the foreground. I wish I could have gotten further into the story, but I knew if I played longer, I just wouldn't stop playing. Just look at how big this map is. I loved every second playing this game. And in addition to this, part two is on Game Pass 2. There's plenty of content for you to try out, and there's no reason for you not to try it if you actually have Game Pass. My rating for this game is 9.5 out of 10. To wrap things up, these are the top five games I feel Xbox Game Pass has to offer in this area of gaming. When you don't know what games to play, these are great choices. They all offer something unique and fun, which is the atmosphere every gamer loves. If you don't agree, or if you have some games that you'd like me to try, list them in the comments below. If I helped you in any way, drop a like, and consider joining the Falcon Force by subscribing. Stay strong and fly on, everyone!